What's up guys? So this video is sponsored by Clan HQ, which is a fully featured messaging app that specializes in building integrations for your favorite games. They've already got all the features you know and love, including stickers, GIFs, photos, albums, notes, reactions, extensive notification and badging settings, full admin controls, the ability to set up an alliance, assign leaders and officers, etc. But here's where it gets awesome. Because this app is designed to integrate with Marvel Strike Force, it will do a lot for you automatically, like create general leadership and announcement chats when you make an alliance, including chats for each strike team, you'll always be able to view someone's in-game name, you can flag yourself as looking for an alliance, or auto-post to recruiting chats if you're looking for members, you'll even be able to look at someone's profile and see things like their total collection power and strongest team power. I'll put a link to Clan HQ in the video description below, so you can be one of the first to check them out. I don't want to watch your stupid video, just tell me what are the best orange upgrades for the Wakandans. Okay. Number one, Shuri passive. Number two, Black Panther passive. Number three, Shuri ultimate. Number four, Okoye basic. Number five, M'Baku passive. Number six, Okoye ultimate. Number seven, Shuri special. Number eight, Killmonger special. Number nine, Killmonger basic. Number 10, Black Panther ultimate. And number 11, Killmonger passive. Yeah, all of those. What's up guys, and welcome to another episode of Orange Essentials. Today we are taking a look at the Wakandan team. Now these guys need a few more tier fours than your average team, so let's get right into it. So we're gonna be evaluating the abilities based on a four star ranking system. Four stars is absolutely essential, three stars is very strong, two stars is standard, and one star is not worth. First up, we're gonna look at Shuri. All right, so Shuri's basic, Going from level 6 to level 7 adds 50% damage, and it changes it from one turn of heal block to two. So, this ability is just not that important. 50% is a good amount of damage to add to a basic, especially if it does splash damage, and two turns of heal block is definitely better than one, but it's still really, really low damage. Even after tier 4, it's only hitting for 200%. Shuri is not there to do damage, so it's just standard at best, two stars. All right, looking at the Shuri special, the upgrade with tier fours allows it to always generate an extra ability energy for one random Wakandan ally. So this is absolutely essential. I really love this upgrade. I actually just did it myself recently. I've been working on my Wakandan team and that extra bit of energy can be the difference between Black Panther getting an ult and getting a bunch of resets or Akoye being able to turn me to rewind someone one turn sooner, a Killmonger ult, I mean, you name it, there's so many really big abilities. Even if you just need M'Baku to step in and taunt, there's so much you can do with it. Ability energy is always good, and this guarantees that another Wakandan is going to get that ability energy, so I love it. Four star. All right, looking at Shuri's ultimate. So the tier four upgrade on this adds 250 flat healing, which is terrible. However, it actually makes the ability to repeat a fourth time instead of just three times. So that is an extra negative effect cleared and an extra heal not just for 500 health, but also for 15% of Shuri's max health. So the extra debuff removal and the extra chunk of healing is absolutely huge. Hands down, this is a four star, no brainer. All right, and finally, we're looking at Shuri's passive. So putting tier fours in Shuri's passive does a couple things. On spawn, instead of speeding up self and two Wakandan allies, it speeds up self and all Wakandan allies. And then also, instead of giving all the Wakandans 20% additional max health and raid, it ups it to 40%. This is monumental. First off, everyone spawning with speed up is really, really huge. It guarantees that you can take five turns before the enemy even gets to go, which is awesome. And then an additional 20% max health and raids is huge, especially when you look at the way this team functions. Firstly, Killmonger can heal himself, so the larger health pool he has, the better. Black Panther and Okoye are kind of squishy and really benefit from the extra tankiness. The more health Shuri has, the more she can heal. And M'Baku heals himself, and he's a tank, so obviously the health helps him as well. So, yeah, just this, this ability upgrade is absolutely monumental. It is the first one I would do. Definitely four star. All right, now we're going to take a look at Black Panther. So, Black Panther is basic, when you add tier 4s, it goes from 180% damage to 210% damage, and it goes from a 90% chance to apply a slow to a guaranteed slow. So a 90% slow is pretty reliable, but extra 10% doesn't make a big difference, especially considering that a lot more often it's about whether it gets resisted or not, but the main thing here is the 30% damage. 
Now that is a very standard upgrade. It's a little bit tempting to weight it a little bit heavier because Black Panther a lot of times does have an offense up and every kill that Black Panther gets is really, really valuable. So you can't really waste materials upgrading Black Panther because if it makes it easier for him to get a kill, he can get another turn and that is unbelievably good for you. However, it's only 30%. So the likelihood that that's going to translate to kills pretty low. So for me, this is a two star. Now we're going to look at the Black Panther special. So attack primary target for 190% damage at level six. When you put tier fours in, it goes up to 230% damage. So just like with the previous ability, 40% damage isn't amazing. It's not the right home map. It's very, very standard. Again, you can't really waste tier fours on Black Panther. If he can get a kill, can get a reset and that is invaluable so every one of his abilities is worth giving some extra damage but i don't know that i would prioritize this over many of the other more important upgrades so for me for this team it's just a two star all right now we're looking at the black panther ultimate so the tier 4 upgrade to this adds 30% damage to the primary target and 30% damage to the adjacent targets. It also adds 30% damage to everyone that it hits if he's charged, and it adds an extra 5% crit chance, bumping it up to 20% crit. Now, this is pretty big because this is really the move that you try to capitalize on. You try to already have your offense up, you try to leave some people low, and in one big nuke you try to get Black Panther as many kills as possible with his AoE, and that way you can kind of snowball off that and take a bunch of free turns. So, for that reason, even though the actual damage increase isn't that crazy, again, for every kill that you can pick up with this ability, it makes a huge difference. So, for that reason alone, definitely giving this a 4 star. Alright. Now we're going to look at the Black Panther passive. So this does a couple things. Firstly, it allows him to gain charge. Instead of one dropping below 80%, it's any time he drops below 100% max health. So it's really easy for him to get charged. And then, on kill, fill speed bar instead of 80% to 100%. And this is just absolutely essential. This ability is so, so, so important. It is literally one of the cornerstones of this team and what makes them work. And that is getting a full guaranteed immediate follow-up turn anytime Black Panther gets a kill, and this also applies to assists. So if Black Panther jumps in and kills someone with an assist, he will immediately, right then and there, take another full turn. On the flip side, if someone assists him and gets the kill, again, immediately, he can take another turn. So it's just absolutely critical, and yeah, that extra turn meter makes a ton of difference, especially if you can stack up a few kills, use his ultimate, and get like three kills. Being able to take three back-to-back -back turns instead of two and a half is a a huge difference so hands down this is one of the most important upgrades on the entire team definitely four star now we're gonna look at Killmonger so Killmonger's upgrades might not necessarily look like a big deal but if you really dig into the math almost all of Killmonger's upgrades are really really big damage upgrades and he is already hands down one of the most devastating blasters in the game so I really like Killmonger. I've been power mine up quite a bit. I put a bunch of tier fours in him already. I am not disappointed at all. So case in point, let's look at his basic. On basic, if you add the tier fours, it adds 40% more damage and 10% more drain. However, it also adds 40% more damage to the follow-up bonus attacks. And it guarantees instead of one to two bonus attacks, you're always gonna get two bonus attacks. And those also get the extra 10% drain. So this is huge. It's so much damage when he gets that crit and the way his kit works, he is inevitably gonna set himself up to do a lot of critting. So you can add 120% damage to his basic attack with these tier fours. And that's before it's multiplied by crit damage. And of course he can give himself offense up. So it just gets out of control. And all that extra drain means he's so much more reliable at healing himself, which means Shuri's heals can go to other people who might need it more. Now, we did the math on this. I promise you it's true. If anyone wants to send me footage of this, I would much appreciate it. But uh, we did the math, and a seven red star Killmonger, if he gets all three crits on that basic attack, if he has offense up from his special, he can 100 to zero a seven red star Thanos. 100 to 0, completely kill him with a triple crit basic if he has offense up. That's how dangerous Killmonger is. So I absolutely love this upgrade. It made my Killmonger do so much more damage. Definitely a 4 star. Alright, now we're looking at the Killmonger special. And for this, it just adds 40% damage. However, it adds 40% damage to an attack that attacks 3 times. So just like with the basic, it adds 120% damage. 
And again, that can get multiplied even further if he crits and the way his kit is set up, he's gonna crit. So yeah, it's just absolutely devastating. It is so much more damage. Again, just 120% damage. So worth definitely four star. All right, now we're looking at Killmonger's ult. Killmonger's ult is really the only ability that I don't think is essential for Killmonger. And it's still really, really good. I was on the fence about it, but it's, it's not quite super necessary. So if you put in the tier fours, it adds 30% more damage to the primary target. Instead of chaining to five targets, it chains to all targets. It adds 30% more damage to the people that it chains to. And on crit, it adds 25% more damage to the mine that he throws down that damages everyone. So it is a good amount of increased damage. I mean, you're gonna get an extra 25% on the mine, which you have to assume most of the time you're gonna get if you set it up properly, and another 30%. So it's like a 55% damage increase on damage you're dealing to everyone so it's really really nice the only drain that's going to apply to this is his base drain however and the reason i couldn't quite call this essential is it takes some setup it's not always super convenient to use sometimes i hold off on using it because there just aren't the right targets to chain to so just because you don't use it all the time and it's kind of a long cooldown and it's not a massive amount of damage uh this one for me is a three star all right, and finally, looking at the Killmonger passive. So the Killmonger passive, when you add tier fours, makes on defense up his attack that hits the most injured ally, instead of doing 260% damage, it jumps up 70% to 330%. And that's really, really good. The way Shuri's kit works, she's constantly giving herself energy and constantly applying those defense up, so it's every few turns, it's a free attack, and it's hitting the most injured enemy. So a lot of times it's hitting a character that you were already trying to focus on, and Maybe a taunt came up and you couldn't quite get that remaining damage dealt. So being able to definitely put him away with Killmonger is really, really huge. 70% damage on an attack that is procking all the time is really, really good. So again, for me, this is easily a four star. All right, now we're gonna look at Ikoye. So looking at Ikoye's basic, it adds 20% more damage to the basic, but gain 50% extra focus for this attack. That is absolutely huge. So Okoye is all of the dispel that the Wakandans have. So it's very, very important that she is constantly able to dispel. She can't be getting resisted. And trust me when I say she needs the extra focus. 50% extra focus is really, really good. And this does apply to her assists. And the way her kit is set up, she does a lot of assisting. So this is super, super essential. You're gonna rely on her for the dispel. So this is definitely a four star. All right, so now we're looking at the Okoye special. Putting tier 4s in the special adds 40% more damage to the primary target and 40% more damage to the adjacent target as well. So, it's not an insane amount of damage. She has decently high damage, she does a lot of piercing, so an extra 40% is nice and it hits multiple targets. For me, it's definitely not essential. I was kind of on the fence between standard and strong, but uh, for this one I think, I think I'll give it a 3 star. Alright, now we're looking at the Aquail. So when you put tier 4s in the Aquail, it adds 30% damage to the ability, and then it rewinds speed bar to another 20%. So this is a really big deal because this move in particular can be very make or break. You basically get to pick one character and totally throw off their rhythm and prevent whatever they were planning on doing. And so while the 30% damage is not particularly impressive, the rewinding their speed bar by 50% can make a huge difference, especially if you're rewinding the speed bar of a slower character. Like if you're trying to stop a tank from taunting, that 50% speed bar can allow a lot of opportunities for you to get extra turns in and kill them, defense down, prevent them from whatever they're trying to do, doesn't matter. And of course, more opportunities for BP to get a reset and then go on a tear before they're even able to do anything in the first place. So for that reason alone, this is definitely a four star. Looking at the Akoya passive, the tier 4 upgrade adds 20% piercing across the board to all of our abilities. So on the one hand, it's definitely going to pay dividends, right? Because anytime you do anything, you're going to get the benefit of that extra 20% piercing. However, it's only 20% piercing. It's just such a small amount that it's very rarely going to make the difference in killing someone. So for that reason, for me, this is just a 2 star. Alright, now we're looking at M'Baku. Now, the next character we're going to talk about after this is someone who I think could potentially replace M'Baku, and in most instances will be better, but because there's obviously specialty raids and stuff, you definitely want to also consider M'Baku part of the team, because there's going to be nodes where you can use him and not his replacement, which we'll get to. So, first and foremost, let's look at his basic. 
putting tier fours in Mbaku's basic adds 40% more damage to the primary target attack, 40% more damage to the bonus attack if they dodge the first one. This one's pretty cut and dry. It's a very standard amount of damage improved. It's only ever going to amount to that 40% because if they dodge the first one, they're not even getting hit. And his damage is not that impressive. So this is very standard for me. This is a two star. Now we're looking at Mbaku's special. So adding tier fours to his special goes from one or two stacks of counter to guaranteed two stacks of counter, but more importantly, guaranteed two charged. So the guaranteed two charged is awesome because that is a 100% guaranteed block. Not only are you gonna block for a good amount, but then if you're using him in raid, which of course you are, he's going to heal. So what you're doing is you're guaranteeing he's going to block, take no damage, he's gonna land damage on the opponent instead, and he's gonna heal off of it. So guaranteeing that at least twice he's gonna take no damage, heal and deal damage, that's very, very good. For me, that's a three star. All right, now we're looking at the Mbaku ultimate. So I really actually like Mbaku's ultimate, but it is coded in a very weird way. I'll probably have to make a separate video about it at some point. But putting the tier fours in Mbaku's ult, it adds 60% damage to the primary and adjacent targets. Now the reason why this is a big deal is because he can get resets off both the primary and adjacent targets. And so that extra 60% damage, not only is it hitting a group of people, but he can get a reset and hit another group of people. It's very difficult to pull off, but he actually can get multiple resets. And so because that amount of damage can for sure be the difference between getting a reset and not getting a reset, I definitely think it's very good. That said, it's not really his primary function. If Mbaku's damage is the reason why your Wakandans just fell short on a node, you're probably doing some other things wrong. So for me, although I really like this, it's just a three star. All right, so looking at Mbaku's passive. So this one, there's quite a bit to unpack. First is it goes from on defense up, instead of healing for 10%, healing for 15% max health. And as I previously mentioned, the defense ups are going up all the time. So that extra 5% max health is definitely nice. It helps keep him topped off, and so Shuri's heals can go to the main people that are going to need it, which will be herself, Akoya, and Black Panther. However, the more important part of this is the added block amount. So while charged, this adds, instead of plus 25% block amount, it adds plus 50% block amount, putting Mbaku at 75% block amount, and that's huge. That means he's going to take very little damage from really, really big single target nukes, even like Star-Lord ult and Rocket special. And not only that, but again, if he's charged, he's going to heal and he's going to counter. So there's nothing I love more than watching a big single target nuke hit M'Baku for almost no damage and then watching him heal off of it and retaliate. So for that reason, definitely this ability is a four star. All right. So now we're going to talk about my favorite substitute on the Wakandan team, and that is Miss Marvel. While she doesn't absorb damage quite as well as M'Baku, she can jump in anytime any hero drops below 50% health, so she's always there when someone gets in trouble. She can self-heal, she has AoE, she gives out ability energy, but most importantly, she's constantly jumping in with assists on hero brawler turns. And because the Wakandan team is so built around capitalizing on Black Panther's resets, giving Black Panther Miss Marvel's assist on every single one of his turns Firstly, gives him more opportunity to get resets. And then, because it's very likely that Akoye will also assist, he can get double assists. It's super, super awesome. In addition to that, Miss Marvel will call a Hero Brawler to assist on her turn, which is always going to be BP. So it's another opportunity for BP to get a reset when he's assisting her. So, let's get into it. Looking at Miss Marvel's basic, putting tier 4s in the basic adds 20% damage. Now, that's not a lot of damage. However, it also improves the damage dealt by her counters and assists. And roughly speaking, it's gonna add about 30, technically 29% more damage to her counters and assists. And because this provides more opportunity for Black Panther to get resets, I think this is really, really good. She's always gonna jump in, so for me, this is a four star if you're running the Miss Marvel variant. All right, now we'll look at Miss Marvel special. When you put tier 4s in it, it increases the flat healing from 12,000 to 17,000. So don't get me wrong, 5,000 health is definitely something. It's not a terrible upgrade. However, she has quite a bit of health. You don't use this ability that often. Me personally, I try to save it for when she gets 
you know, fairly low. I'm, I'm not using it right away when it's on cooldown if she, I know she's going to take a bunch of damage. So it's not bad, but uh, for me, it's just a two star. All right, now we're looking at the Miss Marvel ultimate. So putting tier fours in the ultimate adds 20% damage to every target, but more importantly, instead of 40%, it goes to 60% chance to generate one ability energy per target hit. And of course, this goes to random heroes, and all of the Wakandans are, of course, heroes. So I really like this upgrade. It's not essential because it's still only a 60% chance, but in raid, it's common that you'll go against eight, nine, 10 enemies. So there's a lot of opportunity to generate a good amount of energy. And if the right energy flies in the right places, it can make all the difference in getting Black Panther resets and starting you on another crazy tear where you make a ton of progress on the node without being retaliated against. So for that reason, although I don't think it's essential, I think it's very, very good. This is definitely a three star. All right, and now we're looking at the Miss Marvel passive, and as most people already know, it goes from 80% chance to gain assist now on each hero brawler ally's turn, up to 100%, and on turn, instead of 80%, 100% chance to grant assist now to a random hero brawler ally, which on the Wakandans will always be Black Panther. So again, a huge feature of the Wakandan team is getting Black Panther those resets and just allowing him to get free turns and just keep hitting opponents and taking turns over and over and not letting them retaliate. You literally have to play the Wakandans in a way that you're setting up the field for Black Panther to get a bunch of free turns. And nothing makes that easier than having Miss Marvel always assist on every single one of his turns and always calling him to assist on every one of hers. It makes it so much easier to set him up for resets and the free turns, I can't stress this enough, they're absolutely huge. So this one's a no-brainer, this is definitely a four-star. All right. So that is a wrap. Those are the essential tier four upgrades for the Wakandans. I will recap that one more time. So that's number one Shuri passive, number two Black Panther passive, number three Shuri ultimate, number four Akoye basic, number five Mbaku passive, number six Akoye ultimate, number seven Shuri special, number eight Killmonger special, number nine Killmonger basic, number 10 Black Panther ultimate, and number 11 Killmonger passive. If you're gonna be running the Miss Marvel version of the Wakandans, then you also want to include Miss Marvel's basic and passive. Aha! <laughs> but on that note, I'm gonna wrap up. Shout out to Vet, who did a great job with the editing on this video. Shout out to Clan HQ for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link to the infographic in the video description below. Feel free to tickle that subscribe button and be part of the legendary casino notification squad. Anyone is welcome to join my Discord, discord.gg slash casino. We have blitz predictions, infographics, links to videos, content creator Q&A, and more. And uh, of course, I have plenty more videos to make for you guys, so I'm going to get to work on that. Thank you guys for checking this out, and I will see you guys real soon. Peace!